pandemic, the gratitude felt for all our frontline workers has been echoed across the country. And that's why for one patient, it was really a shock uh, to see staff turning the applause to him as he left hospital. Yeah, after almost two weeks of fighting the virus, Hilton Murray Phillipson was given a guard of honour while being discharged from Leicester Royal Infirmary. We'll speak to him on the programme in a moment, but first, here's a reminder of that incredible moment. Hilton Murray Phillipson, I can see you, um, Hilton, uh, joining us from Market Harbour, smile with a real depth of gratitude in that smile. It must have been, we'll come to how long you've been there, a huge relief for you. Well, of course, it was one of the great moments of my life. I mean, after 12 days in hospital, um, you know, for that particular chapter to end like that was absolutely, you know, astonishing. Of course, I was on a major high. It had been my birthday only the day before, which was a pretty emotional moment as well. Um, but yes, I mean, just the feeling that I'd made it, that I was alive, thanks to the kindness and the professionalism and the compassion of all those people who lined that corridor. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't come any better than that. Give us an idea of what your birthday was like the day before. I suppose it's moments like that, isn't it, where your gratitude to staff for, for a, the little things that happen, I suppose, goes through the roof on a day like that. Well, absolutely. I mean, when you are as ill as I was, you are reduced to basically the state of being a baby, completely dependent on others for every little thing that happens during your day. So um, my birthday was an exciting day because by then I was able to sit in a chair beside the bed. You know, that of itself was a giant step forward. But anyway, so there I was um, sitting in my chair and one of the nurses came up and um, I, she obviously looked at my wristband and my records and so on and said, gosh, you know, I see it's your birthday. And, um, you know, what would you like? And uh, I think I'd been in hospital then for sort of 10 days. I'd been through the mill. I felt pretty battered and bedraggled. And it suddenly occurred to me, well, my goodness, wouldn't it be fantastic to have a shave? So I said, well, you know, I'd love a shave. And she said, all right, my doctor, I'll give you a shave. And, uh, you know, she then performed that act of, of um, great kindness, you know, very well. And um, later in the afternoon, all of the nurses gathered around my bed. And because uh, I was then exhausted, having been sitting up, I think, for three hours, um, and produced a piece of cake with a candle on the top and sang happy birthday. And I have to say, I, I wept like a baby because there was just too much emotion. It was it was too joyful. It was too much to contain. I, w I had so much gratitude. It was fabulous. Do you know, it's joyful to see someone who's <laughs> been through the mill with this as well, clearly um, better now. Um, just tell us a little bit about um, you know, how it affected you in the beginning and when did things really sort of take a turn for the worse? Well, in, <clears throat> it was vaguely similar to the Prime Minister, actually, in the sense that I was ill at home for... Uh, nine days on the ninth day of pretty consistent temperature of 40 degrees um, and you know 104 um, I didn't actually have a particularly bad cough and that's why I wasn't really sure at the time that I had COVID-19 but anyway I called the ambulance and they came out and uh, they said actually at that stage I think you're best you know where you are stay at home but do please call if it gets any worse and on day 10 um, I actually sort of fell to the floor and vomited on top of everything else. So I called the ambulance again, they came out, and at that stage, um, clearly my oxygen level in my blood had fallen to unacceptable levels. And um, they said, okay, you know, please, you know, you're going to come with us. And that's really when my, um, my journey in hospital began. You say, um, you say you went through the mill. I mean, one of the toughest days early on in, in your stay in hospital, you sadly lost your father on, on the day that you were hospitalised. Is it right you had to watch your own dad's funeral from, from hospital? Yes, that's absolutely right. He died on the 20th of March, and I was taken into hospital on the 21st. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, who would have believed it? When my father was buried, there wasn't a single member of the family in attendance. My mother and one of my sisters by that stage um, had also been uh, taken off to hospital. Uh, and my other sisters, you know, were, we were all, everybody was self-isolating at that stage. 
but we did actually have a video clip made of the ceremony by a kind friend. And so we were all actually able to watch um, the, 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 the burial and our um, parish priest you know, saying prayers over his grave. So we were strangely together in spirit, even though we were physically fragmented. But extraordinarily um, difficult times for everybody. Um, and just, I mean, how are you doing now? Well, I'm, I feel on top of the world. Um, I've lost 15% of my body weight. I've got no backside, I've got no thighs, my face probably looks a little bit battered, but I tell you what, I'm alive and it feels great. <laughs> mm. oh. It's wonderful to hear, and one thing we're doing today, um, Hilton, is we're sort of asking people to send in their love for the heroes, you know, NHS workers, frontline workers, key workers, all those people. I'm sure when, you know, when we see, as Louise said, when we see that video of you coming down the, the hall of the hospital and people clapping and, and you've talked to us about that emotion, I'm sure there are individuals and, and just the general staff who you'd love to pay tribute to this morning as well. Well, absolutely. I mean, these really are the heroes of, of the moment. I mean, you know, these are the Spitfire pilots of 1940. And unlike the rest of you, who, you know, the whole nation, we know how special the NHS is. The difference for me is, of course, I now know these individuals by name. I can, I can put faces to these kind people. You know, there's, there's Maggie, there's Anita, there's Rachel, there's Pretty. You know, and I just want to say thank you to all of those people from the bottom of my heart, because it's only because of your care, your compassion, your professionalism, your dedication, that I am here speaking to you today. Well, do you know what? You're filling us uh, with emotion and joy and, and passing on it. So it's a really wonder, wonderful thing to see you. Um, what are your plans? My plans? I have no plans. I'm taking it day by day. I'm trying to put on a little bit of weight. <laughs> um, I'm walking a little bit further every day. I mean, I can now walk about, you know, 300 yards. And um, my goodness, I just appreciate every little thing. I don't need to have big plans, you know. For days, I was fantasizing about a piece of toast and marmalade, you know. That's enough for me. I'm grateful. I don't need a sort of steak frites or whatever, you know, just the simple things. Um, so I'm just, I'm just loving being here talking to you. It's great. Well, it's <laughs> fantastic for us to talk to you as well. I'm sure our viewers are really appreciating it at these dark times, difficult times, when people are worried, when people are concerned about themselves and members of their families, to hear your, you know, your wonderful words this morning, given what you have been through in terms of your own health, you know, watching your, your dad's funeral on, on a video, what would be your encouragement this morning to people who are watching you, listening to this, and thinking, I, this is exactly what I need to hear at the moment. Can you give some words of encouragement to those who might be facing something like this in their own family at the moment? Yes, well, absolutely. I mean, I would, <clears throat> I would say, you know, if I can make it, anybody can. I think this disease is pretty random. You, it's no respecter of age or sex or I don't think physical fitness. Um, but I think that if you, if you just trust in, um, I think, in yourself, and, you, uh, you know, my experience, you, you just know that you're surrounded by such amazing people. I don't think you can do it on your own. You know, I was so lucky to have the people around me that I had. I was also lucky to have, you know, friends and family literally around the world in prayer groups actually praying for me. And that was another really important thing. You know, I felt held, not just in my immediate surroundings, but also in the wider world. And, you know, I really do encourage others, you know, if you do get it, you know, you can make it through. Of course, you know, I am conscious that that little video clip you just showed, you know, the other side of that coin, of course, is, you know, my story is quite special, because unfortunately there are so many others for whom the outcome is different. But, you know, it needn't be that way. You can make it. And having been through it and have been, having been in what was clearly a grave, a dangerous situation, what is your message to people about you know, what we've been told by the government, stay at home, stay safe, protect the NHS? Well, absolutely. You know, <clears throat> I, I was lucky. I think I got it, you know, in the sense my timing was lucky because the hospital clearly was busy, but it actually wasn't overwhelmed. And, of course, the measures that the government are telling people to follow are absolutely vital um, because, you know, self-isolation and social distancing, you know, those are the ways in which the numbers can be 
limited to the extent that the NHS can actually cope. So it's absolutely vital that, that those guidelines are followed. Thank you. It's a real That's pleasure it. to yeah. speak to you. <laughs> Thank you very much for bringing us some joy this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Enjoy putting on that weight again as well. <laughs> Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. I think it's uh, something that many people need to listen to this morning. Yeah. I, I love the fact that he's got, you know, Maggie and Anita and Preeti and Rachel, all those individuals yeah. who he now knows who have, have made a huge difference to him and to his family as well. So thank you to everybody on the front line. And don't forget today we are nominating our...